What's going on? Welcome to Build. I'm Kevin Kenny, and we are kicking off the week with Rome Flynn. You probably know Rome from starring on ABC's How to Get Away with Murder, and you can check him out this Friday as part of Tyler Perry's A Medea Family Funeral. Take a look. Bible say, yea, though she walked in the valley with the shadow of little Red Riding Hood and the three bears, she feared no evil, because the three little pigs was not around. Amen. Hallelujah. How you doing, baby? I'm okay. Well, you look bad. We here because your dad is dead. Now we coordinating the funeral. I hope y'all can appreciate what I'm gonna try to do. And if you need anything, just let us know. I know it's about funerals. I done buried a lot of men. A lot of them. That funeral was gonna be messed up. <laughs> Are you ready for a miracle? Are you ready for a You're about to get shot. This is the church. If you come up here with that boy, I don't mind busting you in your face, throwing that's Jesus to forgive me. Oh my God. Oh, I'm a real thug. I'm an OG M A D E A. Are you ready for a miracle? We're sorry. Apparently, he was taking some sort of stimulant. <laughs> We're having some trouble keeping it down. I want to know if he's an organ donor. <laughs> On that note, please give it up for Rome Flynn, everybody. Now, before we get to any of this, you are like the trooper of all troopers. We got to talk about this travel day yesterday. Yeah, it was... Uh... Interesting to say the least. I mean, it was a journey. Yeah, it was a journey. I got here probably 7 a.m. Oh my God. Today. To, I was, today yeah, you today. got here. Yes. Yeah, I was supposed to be here uh, yesterday around 3 p.m. I was at the airport the entire time. Didn't go home. I was at LAX. Oh my gosh. Um, wasn't a good thing. But I'm here and I'm happy to be here. Yeah. So. Well, we're happy to have you. And if you're watching at home, it's about 11 a.m. local time. So you've been here all of four hours yeah. in New York. Right. Uh, thank you so much for stopping by, Rome. But you've always been sort of, I was, you know, I follow you on social. You, you're sort of, very honest and transparent about, you know, there's an old uh, song lyric about, you know, this is a this is a fun job, but it's still a job, right? Yeah. And you're sort of really honest and open about that, of like the hard work that goes into the, the craft of entertainment. No, for sure. Um, I think that just me being a, uh, you know, a person of color um, and realizing representation matters. Um, so for me, any job that I work on, I always keep that in my mind because... Um, I think that if I can influence someone to just step out of their comfort zone, you know, because a lot of times uh, people, they, they watch TV and based on what they see is how they treat people sometimes, you know. A lot of people don't, they don't know other races or things of that nature. So um, in my mind, if you can watch me on maybe how to get away with murder and say, oh, okay, um, maybe I'll go up to someone and talk to them if I don't know them, you know, something like that. But yeah, I mean, the work itself is, it's not work to me. I, I, I genuinely just love doing it. Like, I live this. Like, I, I, I go to sleep with it. I sleep with it, you know. So it's just my life, honestly. And, and I'm happy I'm able to do it on a such amazing scale. I mean, it's Viola Davis, and I get to work with her. It's crazy. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. You talk about being a role model, being an example uh, for people all around the world. Mm -hmm. You strike me as a very focused professional, especially at a young age that you are. I find talking to different people, whether it's musicians or actors or actresses, right, entertainers across the board, it's you got to find your purpose to have that sort of focus, right? Because this can all seem kind of silly, and I don't want to say pointless, but like you know, you can kind of be like, well, why am I doing this? You know, in yeah. the, especially living out in Hollywood and whatnot. Mm -hmm. It sounds like you found your purpose. Yeah, um, I think that uh, stepping into doing acting, uh, it wasn't something I'd done my whole life. You know, um, I played basketball my whole life. I still do. I had a scholarship. Didn't end up doing it to pursue acting, uh, which some people might think is crazy. But I think it kind of plays into the kind of person that I am, you know, um, that I kind of took a chance on pursuing something that I didn't know if it was definite or not, you know. Um, but the work is important because what you leave behind is what people remember you for. And I want to be great. You know, I, I don't want to be... Average. I'm not searching that. I, I know what I'm up against. I know it's very difficult to 
be great at anything, you know. So with that in mind, I always approach it with the same integrity and I just respect the work. Um, so I do the due diligence. Like sometimes I don't want to stay up and go over stuff. And sometimes you, you know, you fall into habits of, I say, phoning it in. Because you can show up to work and, and you can halfway know your stuff and, and, and you can get by, you know. But like I say, when I'm searching, I, I know it's, it's something that I want, which is longevity. You know, I, w- I want creative control. You know, it, there's certain things that I have a, a bigger picture in mind. So with that, you know, I, I always approach it with that kind of manner. You talked about the basketball just there. Was that your first love, would you say? Yeah, I mean, I still I still love it, you know. Yeah. Um, you still play? Yeah, I still play. I played uh, Saturday. We just lost our championship game. I'm kind of <laughs> sad about that. Maybe it's a sore subject. Yeah. Um, but, no, I, I, I need that. You know, it's kind of like a sanctuary for me because sometimes, like, so many things aren't in my control. And, and in basketball, it just seems like it, it seems like uh, poetry to me. It seems like something that makes sense. So, um, I need to do that, you know. Thankfully, none of the shows have been like, you can't play. Yeah. Because I don't know what we do about that. <laughs> but um, they, they supported me, you know, and, and some of my cast members have come to my games and things of that nature. So I think that uh, basketball kind of ties into the person that I am, you know, and I love doing it, so I'm going to keep doing it. What parallels do you, have you found so far between honing your craft as an entertainer and honing your craft as a basketball player? Um, I think it, it, you get to learn a lot about a person uh, based on how they play basketball, um, their personality, um, what kind of personality they are on the court, what position they play. Uh, because basketball is a team sport, but um, it, it, it's a very visual sport. Now, like football, where you can wear a helmet, you can kind of be in sync with with you know with the entire the atmosphere of it. Basketball, you're very much like singled out, and you have responsibilities as as a as a player. As for me, I'm, I'm a point guard, so I have the responsibility to maybe facilitate to my team or to make the right decisions. So it's, it's very pressure-based. But on, at the same time, it's sort of like a, a, a memory you know, thing. So I kind of tie it into acting. You know? So I don't second-guess myself on the court. So I try not to do that when, when I'm working on screen. We talk about being a point guard. Now let's yeah. use another analogy. Okay. How do you... How do you your role, if you're you're running the show as a point guard on the court, pretty much, right? For any non basketball fans watching, how does that compare to you on a set? Um, I, I, I just kind of go with with depending on what my role is. You know, if I'm number one, uh, I step into it with the same integrity as I would if I was last on the call sheet. But um, I just you know I treat people with respect regardless of where where I am. You know, right. on on any sheet and. Same with basketball. Like, I respect my opponents. Like, I want to win, you know. And I kind of approach it in that sense when I'm doing scenes. Um, Because it's not like a battle when you're doing a scene, but there is a sense of, like, responsibility to hold your own. To execute. To execute and and to do your part, you know. You know, working with Viola Davis, you have to, you really have to focus on that, you know, because she's fantastic. It's effortless to me when I watch her. You know, I get to work with her in an intimate setting, and and uh, I've learned so much from her. Not just like for her, from her telling me anything specific, but just seeing how she, every word that comes out of her mouth just feels like gold to me. And I, and I, so I'm searching for that. You know, where you can just lock in, and you, everything you say just kind of clicks. And yeah, I, I think I read something about Meryl Streep saying. Uh, because what I used to do when I approached scenes, I would go through and I would kind of change things a lot. And I read something that she said about saying, hey, you know, next time, don't change it, you know? Next time, make that the thing. Make that the thing and your reason in that scene. So I'm just always trying to evolve and trying to grow because that's what you have to do to have longevity in this business. Like, you can't, you know, stay in one lane. You, I mean, you've grown so much in such a really short period of time. You started off uh, in the soap world on the Bold and Beautiful. Soap world, yep, Bold and Beautiful. <laughs> why do you say I, it like I that? I love Bold and Beautiful, well, man. It's still it like my that? family. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I think there's a stigma when it comes to soap people. Um, I think that because of the amount of work that they have to do, that their creative process kind of takes a hit. And, and for me, uh, I, I never felt like that. Because I, like I said, I approached it the same way on whatever job I've done. Like Bold and Beautiful taught me to be responsible, you know, because you have to show up. You got 40 pages 
sometimes you have crazy storylines you have to navigate through and you're on a very you know short time period to get those things done um so i definitely credit my acting like chops to that because the first year i was on there i I was terrible like i i'm pretty sure i was like i have to go back and watch an episode (laughs) but um probably a half a year and a half in I, i started to really click and started to really figure out what i was doing and from that point on it helped me grow as an artist and as an actor and and you know as a person, honestly. So shout out to Bold and Beautiful. Do you remember what that moment is? I'm just thinking if we have like a young actor watcher right now, of yeah. course, they're all probably searching for that moment where it all does click. Was, was yeah. there a, like a poignant moment for you that you can point out? Um, I think uh, one of the moments for me was tor- towards the end of my tenure there at Bold and Beautiful. Um, I had made a conscious decision that I was going to further my career, where right? I wasn't going to stay, um, which was a hard decision to make. But after, like, making that conscious decision, I approached the work differently. Like, I I stopped letting things go by. I stopped being okay with things that I wasn't comfortable with doing. Like, not necessarily in scenes, but, you know, maybe with words or maybe storyline-wise. So I just really stepped out. And I said, look, you know, when I was doing these scenes on Bold and Beautiful, and the producers there are great. And, you know, they, they welcomed it with open arms. And, you know, I came to them about a storyline that we ended up doing and that ended up resulting in in me winning the Emmy that I won. So it just kind of told me, like, don't hold yourself back. Because a lot of times we hold ourselves back, you know, because we we worry about things that 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 we can't control. You know, maybe what people think about you or what they perceive you to be, you know. So I think that it was important for me to step out of that, you know, to go. This is what I want to do. Either I'm going to fail this way or I'm going to succeed this way. So now at this point, that's just kind of how I approach it now. Yeah. It's that point guard in you, I think. Yeah, I yeah, guess so, yeah. Uh, then how did this uh, originally come about? Because we have the season finale coming up on Thursday. But just, uh, you know, back to square one really quick. Yeah. How did you, how did you transition from from your work on The Bold and Beautiful to How to Get Away with Murder? You, you know, um, it, it seems sort of like a blur to me, honestly, uh, be, because towards the end of doing Bold and Beautiful, I, I was doing um, The Have and the Have Nots on OWN. Right with um, Tyler Perry, Shout which which him. came about right yeah through filming the filming filming with him on Medea right and we shot that film in a week which is is crazy you know but um you know I was nervous meeting him because I idolized just a lot of different aspects of what he did you know writing producing directing all those things so you know he kind of pulled me aside and he said uh, you asked me who I was and I was just like I don't know I'm Rome <laughs> you know he's he like where are you from sort of thing right. And he said, I got something I want, I want you to do. Um, I think you'd be great for another show that I have. And I said, really? That'd be great. You know, I want to work. You know, so um, I didn't think anything of it. But like a month passed and he called me. And I was in a barber chair. And he's like, he's Tyler. I'm like, who? I'm looking at my phone. He's like, Tyler, let's talk. I'm, I'm, I'm writing. I'm in the writing flow. I want to talk about this character we're doing. And I'm like, are you serious? Like, and I had to stop my barber. I said, uh, I need a minute. You know, I'm like, have haircut have everything. I, you know, I'm talking to him for like a half hour about this. And, you know, we just started to build up a rapport, me and him. And it helped me sort of go into doing this show, How to Get Away with Murder, because it, it, it's it's on such a platform that I feel like I, you can't hide. You know, like your mistakes, your flaws, or whatever it is you want to call them, they're, they're sort of there for the world to see. Oh, yeah. You know, in, in retrospect, in comparison to maybe Bold and the Beautiful, where it airs every day, you know, so you get that instant gratification. You see yourself or people see it and they move on to the next episode. Whether it's this, this, this will probably air a couple times. You'll see it on Hulu. You'll see it a lot, you know. So it made me really like slow down and really like digest the things that I was doing for this show. Right. And it, it helped me doing Bold and Beautiful and then doing to have and have nots and doing Medea and then leading into this, yeah. you know? So it kind of just, you know, I just got to thank God because it ended up working out great that way. Well, you know what? It's like on a platform that big, like you're saying, yeah. you're either going to fail big or you're going to win big. And of course, you've, sure. you've won very big so far. I mean, I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I don't feel like that. But um, not to say I'm not proud of my work. I am. Right. I, I'm proud of everything that I've done. But like I say, every week that I watch the show, I'm, I'm biting my nails, man. I just am because... I know I make a conscious effort, especially this later half of the season after the mid-season finale. Like, I just told myself, like, let all your insecurities, just, like, let them out the window. And I did. 
So I knew like the second half of the season, like either it was going to be like, wow, that was great. Or it would be like, wow, that really wasn't it. You know, so and I was I was OK with that. Like, I'm OK with failing as long as it's on my terms. Like, you know, I'm OK with not making it. You know, that doesn't deter me from from being great to me anyway. You know, I, I think what deters you from being great is it's not doing it at all. Yeah. You know, because you, you never know what could happen. Let's talk about this film. You shot yeah. in a week, which is incredible. Yeah. You like shooting a movie that fast? Um, <laughs> look, it's funny. Hilarious. <laughs> um, I, 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 I liked it because it was fun. Um, I, I think in, in retrospect, would I want to shoot a movie in a week? Probably not. Um, I think that for this film, yeah, it was perfect. I mean, he works very efficiently. He knows exactly what he wants, the shots, everything. I mean, I, I'm blown away. You know, I, I think he's a genius. I think he's like a pillar of, of, of the industry that's been kind of hidden, you know, and kind of under wraps. He's been, I mean, he's been leading the charge for his own, you know, kind of enterprise for, I mean, maybe 20 years. I mean, yeah. it started with plays, and I just, like, I idolize that because where you started, where he from, where he, where he started, and, and, and where he is now, like, that's, that's where I kind of want to be. You know, in, in some sense. Yeah, what a role model, man. What's yeah. you know, I mean, a mentor, really. For sure. What's yeah. it? You, you were talking about the whole basketball uh, thing before, you know, a yeah. team sport. Of course, acting, uh, as when you're a part of a cast, is a team sport. What's it like when, when there's somebody playing so many different characters on a set? Yeah. Like, it's, it's such a unique experience. What was it like? Um, I mean, it was, it was so fun, honestly. Like, it, it was really hard to be in scenes when, when he was Medea. And listen, I, I'm a pro, but like comedies are fun. And it's like, I laugh. Like you want to laugh at these things that he's saying, that Medea is saying. And I think they were smart because they, they shot the coverage on, on Medea. So I would be off camera just like dying laughing, like everything he's saying to me, you know, but you would never see it. You're not going to see it in the film, hopefully. Right. Um, but no, it was great because he would come in as different characters, like sometimes in the same day, you know, and... It, it would be the first time I saw him in the Medea costume. I didn't know if he was gonna have the whole voice the entire time, you know, like shooting the film. And then like he, we would cut and he'd go, "Okay, cool, let's um, let's set the cameras up over here." And, I, and he'd be looking at me, go, "What?" <laughs> he'd be like, "What? What are you looking at? You never seen a man in a dress before?" Uh, anyway, let's. Uh, and I'm, I just like marveled at that because it's like he was able to put so many different hats on. Yeah. I was reading about the film. Uh, I forget if it was a preview or a review, and they were saying, uh, you know, one of the big lessons of the film is sort of owning up to your mistakes and becoming your own person. You personally, though, what was the biggest takeaway you had from filming this movie? Well, I mean, as, as far as growing as an as, as an actor, um, I, I think for me it, it was important. I mean, each of the Medea films, they always teach you something, and that's the great thing about like Tyler. I feel like he writes these things not just aimlessly. Like there's points mm -hmm. and you learn something. And I don't I don't know that there's a lot of comedies that you really learn things from, you know. So uh for me I I, I just I learned a lot of things, you know, just watching him work, you know, and, and, and with my cast, because I mean they're all pros too. I mean, Cassie's oh, yeah. been there from the beginning with him, you know, and they do the plays together and they really work hard and they 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 have fun and and I guess what I learned is to just have fun. Yeah. You know cuz sometimes you you can just get in your own way and just get in your own, your head about everything. You're working with Tyler Perry. This is like huge just lines get, you know and, and and it just gets away from what's it really about and this is a privilege to do all this stuff. I mean this isn't rocket science. We're not like saving lives. Yeah. Least, I don't think. But, you know, it's great. We've uh we're going to turn it over to the audience in just a few moments, but you have so many talents. We've covered many of them. You play guitar, too. I should mention that. I've seen that on Instagram Live. You also do a heck of a Barack Obama impression. I do. You yeah, do. a little bit. So so if we could, before we turn it over to the fans, how, let's have Barack tell us why we should go out and see this movie on Friday. All right, let me see. <clears throat> okay. Uh, uh, I think it's important uh, that you go out and see this film. Uh, for a couple of reasons. Um, Dia's very great. Uh, met her a couple of times. And uh, good family film. But uh, you, you got to be 13 years older because uh, a lot of things in there. Okay? <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's pretty good. Round of applause. That was awesome. All right, let's head to Twitter really quick. This comes from at uh, the Keating5. Uh, what's been your favorite uh, Gabriel scene, and how did you prepare for all the scenes with Viola? Um, 
my favorite Gabriel scene. I, I honestly, I would have to say the scenes with Viola, uh, with the Annalise in church, the church scene. Uh, I think it was episode eight, maybe. But I really loved that scene because it was the first time you got to see Gabriel and Annalise like alone, you know, in the setting where he has motives that we are not sure about yet. She knows things that that she doesn't want to share with him. So they were kind of met, they kind of met in the middle and he caught her, you know, drinking the alcohol. And that's kind of how he got her keys. And you get to learn a lot in that just very quick scene. You know, we had the the West chest rub. I don't know if you know what that is, but the people who watch the show know what that is. Like she did that to him, you know, and, and she did the same thing to Gabriel, you know, so it kind of ties in like everything. I feel like just in that small scene that we had and plus, it was great. It was just me and her, and I got to learn a lot just from working with her in that scene. Yeah. yeah. All right, we're going to turn it over to a uh, studio audience question. What's going on, Ron? What's going on? Congrats on the show. Congrats on the movie. Thank you, my brother. I want to know, what was that moment like when you got the call that you was going to be a part of Shondaland? Like, what were you thinking when you got that call? Uh, great question, man. Because Shondaland is about, you know, diversity. Shondaland represents a lot, a lot of different areas. And as an actor, especially as an actor, uh, you know, a black actor, I feel like she really leads the charge on, on creating stories, you know, in that sense. And, and when I got the call, I honestly, because at first I, I did the, a guest star, so I didn't know if I got picked up for a series regular yet. And the, we didn't know if the show was getting picked up yet. So... When I finally got the call about the regular job, I just, I was in shock, honestly. I don't, I don't even think I was able to cry. I, I couldn't even cry. I was just so blown away, you know, because where I had, where I had come from, you know, I, and, and to where I was now. You know, I, when I first moved to L.A., I, I worked at Macy's and P.F. Chang's, you know, and at the same time, I would go off, I would get off work at Macy's and go right downstairs to P.F. Chang's and work until about 10 p.m. And I could have never imagined anything like this, you know, being here, or even working with somebody who I, who I idolized, you know. So to get that call to say, you know, you're in, not just like, hey, for an episode, but like, you're going to be a very pivotal point of, of a season that could determine the rest of the seasons. You know, it's not like they have a huge order of seasons. It could have gone, gone terribly, you know, <laughs> could have been really bad, you know. So, um, I really appreciated that, so I first I thanked God, you know, at first, and then I just started like silently screaming, like you know, when you just don't scream, like when you just like you know do that thing, and I just did that for for a little bit, you know. But um, I, I I'm still appreciative of it, like I I appreciate every day working on the show. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, thank you for the question, man. man. Thank you, bro. That's great. I right, uh, Rome, we're unfortunately out of time, but you got a busy day ahead right. of you. Busy I gotta go anyway. You. you know. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm kidding. Thanks for having me. Again, uh, season finale coming up on Thursday on ABC, and the film is out everywhere Friday. One more time for Rome Flynn, everybody. <laughs>